Hello, my name is James Smith and this is Chris Martin. We're both joint founders of First Actuarial. First Actuarial has five offices uh, across the UK and about 160 staff. And we provide administration, actuarial and consulting services to occupational pension schemes. Uh, Tim contacted us and at the time um, I was aware of coaching and we had a few issues with the business. Um, so we decided to take up Tim's offer of a complimentary meeting uh, we met with Tim, we felt comfortable with Tim, and we decided to engage him. Since setting the business up about 10 years ago, uh, we've been working pretty intensely, getting in the office early, leaving late, and that's had obvious implications on our family lives. There's lots of uh, calls on our time in terms of uh, running our office, uh, marketing to new business, servicing our existing clients, and I'm also the operations director for the whole firm. Um, and, and something has to give, you can't do everything all at the same time. Um, well, one of the issues we didn't really have a plan of what we were going to do in terms of our work you know, over the next day or, or week. Uh, so with Tim's help we, we looked at the sorts of things we were doing on a daily basis and monitored that over a period of time. Then we sort of put together a template uh, daily plan of what we should be doing. And now what we do every night before we go home, we pull together the diary that we're going to be working to for the following day starting with the jobs that have to be done uh, and you put them in the diary of, of how long they're going to take and, and when you're going to do them in the day and then fill in the gaps with other sort of the jobs that, that, need, that perhaps aren't quite as important but still need to be done until the, the plan is full. You can then the following day you come into the office you know what the work is that you're going to be doing and you can monitor that as you go through the day. So one of the problems with the intensive work was you know getting into the office early you're leaving too late in the evening um, and obviously, as I said before, the, the detrimental impact on family life. And having the daily diary has been extremely beneficial in addressing this. Um, our daily plan now starts at a particular time and aims, you know, in my particular case, I aim to finish work at half past six. And you know, once I've completed my tasks by half past six, I'm free to go home and enjoy my family life. Um, and I'm also finding that I actually get more work done in the day, you know, working less hours, than was previously the case, which is a win-win situation. And, and because it's proved so successful for James and myself, we've actually you know, taught the staff um, that, that support us on how to use it to, to encourage them to become more efficient and manage their time in a better way that is obviously a, of absolute benefit to the business as a whole. And I think it helps because they've seen us actually going through that process and they've seen us using it. And so we're not telling them to do something that we're not doing. We're telling them to do something that we're, we've already got in place and have been through that process. And um, they really like it and they've taken it on board. So whilst the business has grown very successfully, we both realised that we couldn't carry on in the way that we've been operating for the last 10 years, uh, with the business being sort of over-reliant on, on James and myself. So we need to set in place plans to, to, to pass that down and, and get other staff involved in the long-term running of the business. To make ourselves independent of the business was to try and stop people coming to us for the smallest um, little queries. And so what we did was we thought about all the different areas that they might come to us for, which might be simply that um, a light's not working, a light switch is not working, something like that. Thought about all these areas and then we allocated a member of staff to all of those different areas and we allocated one of myself or Chris to each of those areas as a final decision maker. Um, and then what we did was to set guidelines about making decisions in all of those little areas uh, which we agreed with the various staff. And now we find that where there's a, a problem in the office, um, as I say it might be something like uh, electrical light switch not working, it might be health and safety, it might be first aid, instead of coming to us with all those little problems they go to the staff first who hopefully can make a decision um, but if it's something bigger that needs to be decided on, then, then they will come to us and it's saved a lot of our time. In, in terms of independence, um, we've got a lot of more procedures in place now that um, was the way that James and I would do things or make decisions and, and staff can now follow those without having to come and ask us. So our procedures are being implemented without actually James and I being interrupted to, to, to ask what that particular question is. And the implications of that for both of us is that um, we don't feel tied to the office. Um, if things come up at home, we can sort of just take the day off or, or half day off you know, to be with family, to, to, to look after children. 
um, knowing that the office is still running smoothly in our absence. And as an example of that, um, I feel comfortable going home early once a week to spend some time with my children and take them out for dinner once a week. So finally, we had a number of projects that were coming to a natural end, and that was leaving a big hole in our monthly income. So we therefore needed to decide on uh, how we actually replaced uh, that income uh, with regard to marketing to new clients. One of the challenges we had was that there were a number of large projects that came to an end, and of course that meant there was a hole in our monthly income. So we needed to increase the number of clients coming on board. And what we decided to do was look at a number of different areas of marketing, not focus on one single area, just in case something happens to that particular area of marketing, but have a, a range of different ways of marketing. And this is a, an ongoing thing with us, and we've chosen one or two areas. Uh, we've decided with Tim's help how we're going to market in, in that particular way and we've put that in place and we're working on that marketing area and what we'll be doing in the next few quarters is working on the other areas of marketing and gradually implementing those too. Um, well it's early days with the marketing, marketing is, uh, is quite a long-term thing um, but we have already found uh, a steady stream of new business which is, which is really good and I think that's um, partly due to Tim's help in the pitching process and the marketing process, but it's also down to us reading outside of the meetings, which, which is what Tim's encouraged, reading about how to go about pitching, how to go about presenting. Um, and it just means with a steady stream of new business, um, we can be more relaxed about the future. And with the structure in place that we have for future marketing, um, we know that we're going to get extra income in the future to fill the hole that's occurred in the past. If you're thinking of using Tim, Tim is very, very helpful. He has lots of ideas to deal with your problems. Tim is, is very, very good, very helpful. Uh, Tim is very enthusiastic. He's very good at suggesting uh, management books to read outside of the weekly or bi-weekly meetings um, to, to support the, the techniques and, and issues that, that you're addressing. Um, but he is quite demanding. Um, he will sort of, as James alluded to earlier, tell you off if you haven't done some of these, uh, the tasks that have been set the week before. But overall, would I recommend uh, appointing Tim as a coach? Yes, I would.